In this video, I'm going to show you what I think are some surprisingly deep commonalities between Vim, Sed, and Grep. In my last video, I introduced people to the ED editor, and I did that for a very specific reason. Many of the cryptic looking features of Grep, Sed, or Vim can actually be traced back to certain ED commands. So to explain this, I have a file here called lorem, which just contains a bunch of lorem ipsum filler text. So we're gonna be running a bunch of Vim commands, grep commands and sed commands on this file. These line numbers are actually contained in the file itself. I figured it would make things a bit more clear if I keep the line numbers directly in the file. So for our first example, let's go ahead and extract all lines from this file. They contain the sequence of letters Q, U, E. So these are all the lines in this file that grep found that contain Q, U, E, and conveniently grep will highlight them for us. Now, there's another way we can do this, with the ed editor, and let's go ahead and see that. So if I first type g for global, slash for search, and then qe for what I want to search for, slash, and then p for print, now you can see I get the exact same thing. ed doesn't add the color highlighting, but otherwise this is the identical output that we get from grep. Now we'll just exit ed with control d. Now if you wanted to solve the same task with the ed editor instead of using grep, You'd want to figure out a way to do this that doesn't require you to actually use the interactive editor. Conveniently, you can actually just run echo statements and pipe ed commands directly into the ed editor. So we'll run the ed editor on the lorem file, and this echo statement pipes a command directly into it. And after that command runs, it exits from the ed editor and returns us to the command prompt. And you can see here, this is exactly the same output that we got from grep. With ed, there's a bit of extra output here that shows the size of the file. If we instead take the output of this command and pipe it to dev null, everything that was going to standard out goes to dev null, and you can see it, see it still prints this. So that makes it clear that this is not actually going to standard out. So if we wanted, we could probably pipe standard error to dev null, and that would get rid of this extra character here. So now we have output that looks exactly like grep. Now, you might be thinking that example was just a coincidence, but I'm about to show you that you can also do the same thing with regular expressions. So by default, grep uses basic regular expressions, and if we want to make a regular expression that will find instances of exactly two S characters, we can do that with this regular expression, with basic regular expressions. So here's the output from grep, and very similar to how we did before, we can get the exact same output with the ed command. So the regular expression we wrote here is exactly the same as the one that we wrote with grep. And this generalizes to most of the other regular expressions that grep supports with basic regular expression mode. Now, this is a very interesting example to explore. So we saw the first two times that whatever we want to put here is just the regular expression. So you could go ahead and write a placeholder that just says re to represent your regular expression. And then you'd have an ed command that's just g R E for our regular expression and P. So global regular expression print. And now you understand where the term grep comes from. Now let's go ahead and completely change gears to look at sed now. Sed is a very useful program for doing string replacements on the contents of files. This part of the sed command is a collection of instructions that tells us how to do replacements in the lorem file. This part says anywhere from the first line to the last line, do a substitution this part is the same regular expression we saw before. It matches an S character repeated exactly two times. Whenever this pattern is found, it will be replaced with exactly two Ts. This G means to do the replacement multiple times if necessary on each line. If we run this, we get the output of the file with every instance of two S's replaced with two Ts. To make this more clear, let's pipe this to a file. And now if we compare the file lorem with the file one, you can see this is in the file lorem, it's got two s's, and this one has two t's. So here's our sed command, and here is a similar command that does the exact same thing, only it uses the ed editor. Take note of the instructions for the sed command right here. Here we can see that the first command used for the ed editor is exactly the same as the command we used for sed. This is not a coincidence. In fact, many of the Unix tools from the day were heavily influenced from one another. You can see that the ed command isn't exactly the same. 
Here we have to issue an extra ed command. This is just a command that prints out all the lines in the file. In between these two commands, we need a new line. Let's pipe this to a file and compare the two. Now let's use vim to compare these two files to see if there's a difference. Nope, these files are exactly the same. So there is every instance of two S's replaced with two T's. And if we compare it with the original, we see exactly what we expect. Now it's worth wondering, how much do these similarities generalize? It's worth checking the documentation for ED to see what type of regular expressions it supports. A common point of frustration about older basic style regular expressions is that they require a backslash to make certain special characters actually special. After reviewing ED's documentation on regular expressions, it looks clear that the style of regular expressions that it supports is very similar to the older basic style regular expressions. We can also take a look at the documentation for said, and after searching for BRE, we get right to the section on regular expressions. Here we can see that said does support a close variation of basic regular expressions, although according to the statement, it isn't exactly the same. Let's also check the info pages. Here in the info pages, we can see that basic regular expressions, or BRE, is the default in said. Now let's switch topics again and try editing the file with vim. If you've ever used vim before, you've probably done escape colon a number of times. What you probably didn't know is that what you type after this colon is called an x command. The term x will become very important later. You've probably used simple commands like w or q, but today we're going to use this command, which is going to delete lines 10 to 20. And as you can see, it's deleted those lines from our file. Here's another command that we can use, which will copy around some of the lines in the file. This command will take lines 4 to 7 and transfer, or copy them, after the 15th line in the file, which is somewhere around here right now. And here are those copied lines. And here's another command that will go to the 28th line in the file and replace any occurrence of this with this. So that will change that. And here you can see that the update was made. Now if we want to save this, we can go ahead and quit with escape colon wq. So because we're going to change some things, I've made a copy of the lorem file into a and b. So all these files are exactly the same. Now if you check the man page for vim, you'll find there's a very useful command. If you specify the C flag, you can type X commands on the command line and Vim will run them as soon as it starts up. And you can actually use up to 10 of them to do multiple operations in the file. And since saving and quitting is an X command, you can also save and quit automatically. So this Vim command does the exact same operations that we just reviewed. Deleting lines 10 to 20, copying lines four to seven, and doing the string replacement, followed by exiting vim. And it's doing this on the A file. So if we go ahead and run this, and if we check the difference between the A file and lorem, the deleted lines aren't there, the copied lines are here, and the change we made is just down here. Now, here's the really cool part. This echo statement echoes a bunch of ed commands, separating them each with a new line. Hopefully, you can see the similarities between the ed commands and the vim x commands. Let's go ahead and run this on the file b, and if we diff them, they are exactly the same. Note that on both sides, we're missing lines 10 to 20, and you can see the file was changed exactly the same in both files. Now, if we open the file lorem with ed, you can use this command to print all lines in the file. Now, here's the really interesting part. If you check the man page for vim, there's a command line flag dash e that says it starts vim in x mode. If we run vim dash e and then on lorem, we don't get the usual interface that we usually expect with vim. In fact, it looks a lot more like the ed program. Let's try typing an ed command. Look at that. We just ran vim and typed an ed command and we can see output that looks just like the output from ed, only we're in vim. Let's go ahead and run an ed command that will replace all vowels with the character Z. So we don't see anything update in our file, but since this is vim and not ed, we can type visual. And now we're back in regular vim mode. And you can clearly see the results of the edit we just did. Let's say we wanted to undo this change. You can just press the U key, just like you normally would in vim. Now, let's say we don't like the screen updating all the time and we want to go back to an ED-like interface. 
you can just press Shift and Q. Now, Vim will no longer update the screen automatically. Whenever you want to view lines in the file, you have to explicitly type commands to tell it to do so now. If you check the man page for Vim again, you can see in the description that it references an executable called EX. Let's check to see if EX is symlink to something. Unsurprisingly, we can see that the EX command is symlinked eventually to Vim Basic. So Vim and ED have a lot more in common than you think. If you want to consider yourself a Vim Pro, consider launching it in X mode from now on.